What's up STEM Squad? My name is Jay Flores and I am the Global STEM Ambassador at Rockwell Automation. I'm here today to help you with your child's math homework. Today's activity is going to be geared towards grades kindergarten to second grade. If you have children in older grades, you can uh, look at our previous videos. Last week we did a division activity for grades three to five. So make sure to subscribe for other activities. Uh, I also do these videos in Spanish, so check out the channel and see which ones uh, are available in Spanish. These videos are brought to you by Rock Automation and our partner Mind Research Institute, who are the creators of Math Mind Games and ST Math. Remember that you can go to stmath.com forward slash coronavirus to get free access to the ST Math programming until the end of June. Awesome resource for you and your kids, uh, grades K through eight. So uh, today's activity is going to be geared towards K through two, and it's going to be addition and subtraction, but your children aren't going to know that they are doing math homework. There's going to be no worksheets, there's going to be no pencils, no paper, nothing. Because who was ever inspired by a pile of worksheets? We're going to try to make this fun, it's going to be hands-on, and uh, they won't need a computer either. So it's going to be something that is a little bit more engaging for them now that they've probably been doing all kinds of online learning and have always been sick of worksheets. So what you're gonna need for this activity uh, ideally is two stacks of 10 Lego, some kind of building block. If you don't have Lego at home, you can use anything that's stackable. Um, you could use 10 books if you wanted to, uh, but they have to be very close in size. Uh, hopefully you have some Lego blocks at home. If not, anything, again, that can be stacked in a tower like this. It doesn't have to be as, as stable, con stably connected as the Lego blocks allow, but you need to be able to stack them up on top of each other and they have to be very similar in shape. And then you're going to need something uh, to connect at the top that's flat. It could be a long Lego piece like this or it could be a ruler, something long that you will stack across the edge. Because what we're gonna end up doing with this activity is building a math bridge. So they're going to be using addition and subtraction to make sure that in the end, their bridge is flat and stable so that we could get something across it if we wanted to. So the reason why you need two stacks is you're gonna have one for this first part of the activity that is just gonna be for their answers. So this stack over here is gonna be the bricks that they're going to give you as the answer. If you have younger kids in, in the earlier uh, kindergarten age or even pre-K and they're learning counting, this is an awesome activity that can be done with the older and the younger child uh, as well and I'll explain that in a second. The other stack is gonna be you building out your math problems. So for the first one, we are gonna do two plus five. The way that we're going to represent that is a stack of five and a stack of two. So you're going to ask the child, you're not going to say, I need you to do five plus two. So you're going to say, if I'm building a bridge and these are the supports to my bridge, how many from this pile will I need to create an even tower? So they'll look at this. They may connect them and count them. They may see five plus two and they say, okay, that's seven. It doesn't really matter how they approach it. The key is that they physically are going to see the math in the end. Again, it can be say five plus two. Okay, I need seven. So this is where you're gonna add in the younger child if you have one that's learning counting and you're gonna ask them to give you seven of those uh, blocks. So they'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're working on counting while your other child is working on math. Or if you just have one child, just ask them to grab seven for you and stack them up. And then the way that you check the math is to make sure the towers are even. So now you can see that five plus two is the same as seven. And you can have them actually build out the tower. Uh, if you can, try to connect it to something that they're passionate about. So if they have a particular uh, cartoon or movie that they enjoy that has some kind of castle or tower or bridge, uh, tell them that you're building that. Um, or any other way that you can connect it to something that they're excited about is going to make them that much more interested in an activity like this. From then, you can 
do a wide variety of different ones so you can you know work on that very similar we did with adding two numbers or you can add more than two numbers so in this example we are going to put out three bricks and just ask them to do the same thing give them as little instruction as possible have them try to just visualize this as okay this now means that I have to put three together so if they physically count one two three or if they go one two three however they do it in the end what they need to do is give you the answer three and have their little brother or sister or themselves if you're doing this as a one person activity and show you that math there awesome so that's the first two stages of the addition portion now we're going to add in subtraction the way that you're going to do that is with upside down cubes so if you don't have the lego at home then that might make it a little bit more challenging um, depending on what kind of acti what kind of items you have one way you could do it is using color like i did in this example so let's say these are five of the exact same item that aren't bricks you can have you know three blue and two yellow are going to be positive and negative but in, in this case i like to actually flip them over and show these as the negative so the math problem here is three plus or sorry three minus one minus one but the child can look at it in a few different ways. They can you know, sub put these two together to subtract two and realize, okay, that means when I put it next to it, there's only one left. So my answer is I need one over here. Again, they did three minus one minus one equals one. And they can visually see that. For the next one, um, you can add bigger numbers to make it a little bit more complex. So three, sorry, seven minus one minus two. They might start and just subtract one here and physically make it like a process. And then they end up with the four. Or we had seven minus two minus one. Um, they might do this, put the two subtractions together first and then go from there. They might just say, okay, one, two, three, and I need to take away three, and they'll do that, and they'll use a cross. You can, they can get about it however they want. The key here is that they can visualize the math. So when kids are learning, when anyone learns anything in general, uh, it's very difficult the first time if you haven't had any frame of reference. So we're visually giving them the frame of reference. And then later on, when they see the actual paper math, they'll have a better opportunity of uh, understanding the problems. You can also encourage them let me make sure I have the same amount here. This is, yeah, seven, two and one. You can even make, encourage them to make it a process. Like I said, so there, we're walking along. Here's our tower. It sees a command to remove two, continues on, sees another command to remove one more, and it's there. So how many do I have left? I have four. So that means this person over here needs to build four to complete the tower. The last version, you're going to give them the answer. So in this particular example, our answer is six. So one, two, three, four, six here. So you're giving them the end state of the bridge. You're also going to give them some clues. So there's going to be five here. And we're going to have four negative bricks you can represent that in several different ways especially as they get more advanced you can separate them in, in different ways like that or you can stack them so what they're gonna have to do is solve for what we'll call the gap you can mark that somehow with a with a coin or just leave a space in there and say okay if this is what we have how do we end up what do we need to do here to end up with a full tower. So the math problem is five plus or minus, we don't know yet, x. Um, we've got negative four here, and then we've got six at the end. So how do we end up with equals six? So the student will look at this and say, okay, if I put these two together, there's only gonna be one left. 
So then how many more do I need? I have six here total, so I'm going to need five more at the end to add on. So you tell them to give you five, and then you check your work. There you go. So in real life, that problem was five plus x minus four equals six. So they did some pretty simple algebra at a very young age. Let's do one more like that. So we can do... Um, we're gonna have the answer is four, so our bridge is gonna be this high, or our tower, or our castle, however uh, you want them to call it. We're gonna have a minus, another minus, uh, and then we're gonna have nine over here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So you're gonna have nine minus three, and then the gap here. And again, when you're giving them these problems, you're not telling them that this is, sorry that this tower keeps falling over, let's put it here. Um, you're not saying, you know, this is nine minus three. You're just giving them the scenario. And so how many more bricks do we need to put in here? Or how many do we need to take away in order to have the equal tower? So they'll take away three here and realize that they have six and they only need four. So six minus four, or sorry, six minus two is four. And that's their final tower there. So um, play around with that. Then you can do the actual paper math. So then you might do a problem like three plus three minus two, right? And have them do it on paper. And if they struggle, go back to the visual math. So let's say they, their actual homework problem was Let's go with um, six minus three minus three. Let's say this is a, on paper, they received a homework problem that said six minus three, sorry, six minus three plus three. If they're having trouble um, visualizing that on the paper, help them see it uh, with the bricks, right? So if I have three, three, minus three, and six, these two are gonna cancel each other out so I can end up here with six, and that's their answer. They, again, we're trying to stay away from the paper, but I understand a lot of their homework might end up actually having that, so this is how you're going to help them visualize the math. They can see that although these may be made up of different amounts originally, at the end, they will equal each other out, and we'll have our balance page. So I hope you guys enjoy this activity with your kids. Uh, give me any feedback on it. Share, if you're doing it at home, take some videos or pictures and, and share them, tag me with them, and uh, I'll definitely share them to my channels. Um, stay connected to my Instagram and the Rock Automation Instagram account. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, we're gonna be raffling out some of these games, both in English and Spanish. They're uh, amazing games that can be played at home that also teach math in a very similar way to these activities uh, that we did today they aren't even going to realize they're doing math but they're going to be learning very important concepts along the way uh, make sure to subscribe if you like the video give it a like and also to check out the division video and other videos that we'll be bringing to you guys soon uh, hope you guys have some fun with math and i'll see you guys next time